Binary Exponentation is an algorithm that quickly computes power of a number, a to b power, given a and b. For example, 5 to third power is 5 times 5 times 5, 125. And instead of applying brute force in O of b, where you just multiply a by a by a, b times, we need com logarithmic complexity, O of logarithm of b. The idea behind the algorithm is extremely simple. And this example should be enough to explain it. If I tell you that 3 to 4th power is 81, and you have computer or calculator, so you can quickly, in O of 1, make one operation, can you quickly compute 3 to 8th power? And a big hint is that it is 3 to 4th times 3 to 4th. So uh, a computer can just in one operation, one multiplication, compute that this is 81 times 81, uh, I remember it is 6561, but it doesn't really matter. In general, 3 to beef power is 3 to b over 2 power uh, times itself. And let's write down this formula. a to b is equal a to b over 2. We can compute it, for example, recursively, times itself. You can write times square. You can ask if this is something we implement in brute force manner. Of course not. If somebody asks you about a to fourth power, you just try to compute a to b over 2, it will be something, and then this is just computed as 9 times 9. How to compute 3 to second power? Of course, it's 3 to 1 uh, square. If you are given this number, then you can quickly compute 3 to 16th, because it's just this times itself. And that's it. This is already a working code, at least for b being power of 2, where if you want 0 of power, then for every a it is 1. First power is just a. Later we will see that this if is really unnecessary. And otherwise you recursively compute a to b over 2 and multiply by itself, just using this form formula from below. This does not really work for odd numbers, for num and generally for numbers that are not powers of 2. If I need 3 to 11th, then my code here will try to compute 3 to 5th power, because b over 2 rounds down towards 0, and square. And let's see what is missing in this formula. 3 to 5 square, it's 3 to 10th power. I need to multiply by 3, and then it works. As long, uh, always about recursion, it's enough to think, in my current run of recursion, what smaller run I need, in order to compute the answer correctly. If this answer is computed correctly for that other run of recursion, then my value will be computed correctly as well. I don't need to like, think about it and go deeper. Um, and yeah, let's just, just fix this code like that. After computing result, I have this 3 to 5 uh, square. I say, if b is odd, then multiply the result by a. And it turns out that this is already a working code for our problem of binary exploitation. You can use it. And this if turns out unnecessary. If you have 3 to 1st power, and you analyze this piece of code, it will run 3 to 0 of power, and then multiply your result by itself, so it will be 1 times a, anyway a. And this is not really necessary. We can analyze this run further. We need 3 to 5, and it will be computed as 3 to 2nd power square. Second is because it's b over 2, where b was 5 a moment ago. And we need to multiply it by 3. Then we need this recursively. 3 to 2nd power is 3 to 1 square. This computed recursively, then we take square in this line. And this does not happen. If b is even, then the formula from below, this formula exactly works for even b. Otherwise, we need to fix it. We need to s fix it by saying times a if b is odd. And uh, finally, 3 to 1, we either uh, can have an if, or we can say that 3 to 1 is 3 to 0 square times 3. Also, it works correctly. One more look at the code to make sure we understand what it does. This is some base case. a to 0 is 1, unless a is 0, but that's a stupid case. Let's say that a is not 0. We compute recursively that power a to b over 2, and we save it as some variable. 
you cannot say this times itself and again type power of blah blah because then it will be recursively run again you don't want that because you get worse complexity tmp times tmp is result and finally if b is odd then fix that result that's it if a and b are not small values then obviously this is c plus plus we can have some overflows if we use int uh, and most of the time you will want this to be taken modulo some prime value for example and there was previous video about what it means and most of the time if you want to compute like 50 to power 50 you don't really want to get that huge number but if you are in python of course you can compute that and it will just work otherwise remember to take this product modulo m and to take this product modulo m as well while this code is perfectly fine i don't use it because iterative programs are faster than recursive ones and this is code i use during programming competitions it's iterative version of the same thing where uh, i finish when b is equal zero the same happened here in the first line while b is greater than zero i update result in some way if b is odd modulo 2 is 1 then multiply result by a and otherwise we have something strange multiply a by itself let's think what this means uh, e, and on example of 3 to 11 maybe uh, because uh, well first if is b odd b is equal 11 so sure it is odd result is already multiplied by a so we say that result result is 3 times and there will be something more now we increase a Instead of 3, now a becomes 9. It is, let's remember, 3 squared. We divide b by 2. So now we want to just come to compute 3 to 5, 5th power. This is odd. So in the next iteration of the while loop, this if is triggered and we multiply result by a. This time a is 9 or 3 squared. Then we multiply a by itself, a becomes uh, 81, 81, which is equal to 3 to 4th power, divide b by 2. So b is now, uh, we need this, b is now 2. This is not odd, and we don't update, ans we don't update the answer or result, we just multiply a by itself. Now it becomes uh, that big number, 6561 equal to 3 to 8th power. Divide b, b becomes 1, we need 3 to 1st power. And now b is odd for the last time, we multiply result by a, no matter what happens later, result will not be changed anymore. The last thing was this difference. And magically we got a correct answer, because uh, 3 to a, let's say 3 to x times 3 to y is 3 to x plus y. This is equal to 3 to 11. But was that a coincidence? we need to really understand why this is equivalent to recursive version even though recursive sounds recursive version seems more reasonable intuitive and i think for better understanding of what really happened here we need to look at binary representation of number b for 11 it is what 8 plus 2 plus 1 so in binary system this is b our 11 is equal to 1011 in binary system and a recursive function this one it multiplied result by a uh, only if b is odd so that depends on this last bit if this is one then multiply answer by a then when we take here b over 2 so we get rid of the last bit in binary representation and here we get again result multiplied by a only if b is odd so if that second last bit is one then multiply a result by a but that happens recursively and the main the main run of this after running this recursively for b equal to five in computed its value square so b equal to this run recursively that smaller thing took some answer from that and took it then square so if there was result multiplied by a coming from this bit then later this result from that was squared so we got from that a square similarly this contributes as a to fourth power and a to 
eighth power. And this is alternative interpretation of both recursive and iterative solutions. That every number, every power of A, and we for the whole time we work with A equal to 3 for simplicity, uh, the idea is that those can be computed efficiently in logarithmic complexity, and it doesn't matter if that happens recursively or iteratively, in some way you can compute those numbers. And now whenever you're asked about 3 to some power, let's work with 3 to 22. It is, I claim it is product of those powers of squares, well, powers of, uh, with exponent being power of 2. 3 to 22, it is equal to 3 to 16 plus 8, not plus 4, plus 2. So it will be equal, uh, maybe with blue, 3 to 16 times 3 to 4 times 3 to half, uh, times 3 to second power. And you can even put those powers in some array and then take, uh, take a binary representation of B and then you will know which numbers you will need to multiply from this array of special powers of three that you computed. But instead, this iterative solution will do that for you. It will first know three to first power, a, so just a, and then it will compute a square, that thing square, and so on. This line computes three to second, three to four, three to eight. And this line just takes the last bit of b. So that's really understanding of iterative solution. And as I said, in general, iterative solutions are faster than the recursive versions, so I recommend this code. In C++, you can also type it like that, because uh, by default, if conditions, while conditions, they check if integer is non-zero. So this works as well. Some people here type end one, if you will see in somebody's code, then it's equivalent. I prefer modulo 2 because for me as a human, it's easier to think about remainders rather than bits. Uh, but sure, end 1 will take a look at the last bit. So that's also valid. Uh, so again, th this, is, this can also be written in some alternative format, like shift B by 1. But what's the point? And most of the time, this will be taken modulo. So result times A modulo of some m and this thing as well a is times a modulo m so that's really code i would use if i wanted to compute a to b power modulo m in logarithmic time as i already mentioned in the previous video power of a number is something we need to divide by this number or to compute modular inverse there is some smart theorem euler's theorem which states exactly this, and from that, if we divide both sides by a, we get a to p minus 2 is equal inverse of a, 1 over a, in this field, in this, let's say, world of numbers modulo p, and then this is code we need, where power is our function written here. Everything happens modulo, well, I, I use this should be p, this should be p, if, of course, you want to use variable p. And that will work. Modular inverse like that can be computed in complexity logarithm of p. If you want to read more advanced stuff, I strongly, strongly recommend the website cpalgorithms.com. It has materials mainly on advanced and maybe intermediate algorithms. But at the beginning, there is, for example, binary explanation, also then Euclidean algorithm and its extended version. They can be used as well to compute modular inverse. Uh, then there are some important things about prime numbers, number theoretic uh, functions. This is important as well to understand how to compute the number of divisors, to sum them up. Uh, I think this is needed to compute modular inverse for non-prime numbers. It's cp-algorithms.com. Actually, it's translated from Russian and there it's just Emacs. Uh, so do check out that. Oh, actually, there's even an article on modular inverse. Link is also in the description. Our next lesson, the next video, will be about something more advanced, matrix explanation, the thing we learned today, but applied to matrices. And you don't really need to right now understand matrices. I will explain that to you. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. If you like the video, then leave a like. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, thanks for watching.